uh, this ugly manifesto that could destroy the kingdom. But we have to admit we have a problem and we have to deal with it. Well, Michael Pregent is a Middle East analyst and former U.S. intelligence officer. He joins me live now from Washington, D.C. Good to have you with us. You. What do these arrests Thanks, reveal sir. about the domestic, counter, the domestic terror threat inside Saudi Arabia? Well, it shows that there is one, that there is a, a threat. Uh, ISIS is very good at recruiting um, followers. Uh, but what's good about the Saudi operation is that this is what it looks like when a government uses legitimate security forces and legitimate intelligence agencies to develop networks in the Sunni communities to go after Sunni terrorists. It's a great example of what would work or what has worked in Iraq in the past. There is no Sunni force in Iraq to do these similar things. So that's outsourced to Shia militias to do it. But this is what right looks like. Saudi, was able, Saudi Arabia was able to use its security forces to go after ISIS targets and not indiscriminately target or arrest Sunnis. What do you make of the way in which these arrests were made uh, over a period of time, we think over the last couple of weeks? Uh, some of those arrested right. have been accused of already carrying it out attacks, including one in the very sensitive Qatif eastern region of Saudi Arabia in May. Does this perhaps suggest that these are individuals that were on the radar of authorities for some time? Were they aware of their presence? Well, it looks like there was some uh, intelligence developed based on the initial cells identified by the Saudi Arabians. So you start to monitor those cells. You see who else they're talking to. You, you conduct an operation when there's an imminent attack. Uh, the, the Saudis appear to have let this grow to a point where they were able to arrest as many as possible before they were able to carry out an attack. So, so that's a good thing. This is a good intelligence work done by uh, a government with legitimate security forces. What about U.S. concerns that Saudi counterterrorism efforts are somewhat constrained by the kingdom's political interests? Well, there is that argument that, that Saudi Arabia is comfortable with ISIS operating in Syria and operating in Iraq and that once ISIS becomes a threat to the Saudis, that they would actually do something. So you can make that argument. But this also demonstrates that um, good intelligence can result in the capture of 431 individuals, alleged, alleged ISIS members. But there should be intelligence that follows through these arrests. And what that would allow the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to do is to share that intelligence with Western intelligence agencies, with Jordanian intelligence, and even Iraqi intelligence. This panics ISIS as an organization in Raqqa, Deir Azur, Ramadi, Fallujah, and Mosul, because a lot of those plans will probably be revealed basically talking about what ISIS was trying to do as part of this Ramadan offensive. And some of the suspects uh, are not just from Saudi Arabia. They're from a number of countries in the Middle East and North Africa. What does this tell us about the freedom of movement uh, of fighters from one country to another and, I guess, uh, to some extent, what that means in terms of them being able to evade the arrest and the detection of authorities. Well, you're able to come into Saudi Arabia on a visa. You're able to come in through the porous border that it shares with Iraq. You're able to come in from different places. So you can come in. It's only when you get on the radar screen where you start affiliating with terrorist cells or ISIS sympathizers that you'll, you'll come on the radar. But what it suggests is that ISIS can actually uh, use foreign fighters in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to go after Shia targets and also government targets. So it is concerning. Michael Pregent.